My pleasure, please. Thank you. It's nice to be on the other side. Of <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Uh, I tried to memorize something here, but I can't. Too, ma too many drugs when I was young, so I'm trying to. <laughs> um, my name is Meshter Catalin. I'm the founder of Vilo Failure and also co founded Voxa, uh, the audiobooks app. And, um, oh, fuck. I want to start by telling you, right now I'm reading from my phone, that even uh, since I was a little kid, I was very lucky to somehow know that the people telling me what to do and what to learn will not live my life for me. So even the professors, my mom, my dad, whoever it was, I knew that I had to build my own confidence somehow. I can't rely on them. So, but very, very young. I mean, <laughs> I was a rebel since I was, uh, since I was a kid. Because I knew even if I fail, even if it was not my thing, even if it, it doesn't matter, I, I cannot trust these people to guide me in my life. So I, I had to build this, uh, build this trust in myself. This is what I tried to do. And I don't recommend it to anybody, by the way. So I, <laughs> as you're going to see, I had a lot, of, uh, a lot of failures, a lot of problems, but still a, a lot of successes. Um, I will start with the first because this is a tech edition. I usually talk about other stuff, but this is a tech edition. I'm also a tech entrepreneur. And um, I had this idea to build this uh, uh, mall, online mall, like 20 years ago when Nemag was still very young. And um, I wanted uh, people to navigate in the mall and uh, actually feel like an actual mall, like 20 years ago, uh, or maybe 10 years ago. I don't remember. Um, and. Um, this was a very big failure, and the thing is, I, 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 st I had this idea, but I had no money, I had no experience, I had absolutely no way of doing what I was thinking about. But still, it was something that I wanted to do. And a lot of people will tell you, look, you can't do this, like, what are you crazy? You have no money, you live in Timisoara, you have no experience in building products, how are you gonna do this? And um, I started this journey and uh, I went and tried to do and I, I finally built it, uh, being homeless a couple of times. So this is me at the sea, being homeless, eating from the land. Uh, the thing is, when I talk about being homeless, I was walking on this fucking mall. This is why I was homeless, sorry. Uh, so I was always working on this because I couldn't take a job. I wanted to learn the skills I needed to be an entrepreneur, whatever it takes, like whatever it takes. So. I went to, to the sea because it was easier to be homeless there. It was, you know, you could, you could eat from the sea, you could do, you know, you could do stuff. And it was also fun. I mean, I had a lot of fun being homeless uh, in Fama Vecchia and eating snails and it was awesome. But also working from a tent and when talking with the people from Y Mall that I had, you know, a lot of people working with me. Uh, but, you know, uh, only, only making enough money from freelancing uh, just to, you know, whatever, eat if there was nothing available. So uh, anyway, this is as far as I wanted to go because um, I knew this, I wanted to do, build this fucking mall. But okay, I'm going to move forward. Uh, after that, it failed. It failed for many reasons. I, I have the reasons here, but it's, it's obvious. I, I mean, I had no money, I had no experience, I had no... We, we got them all, by the way, to a point where uh, we had uh, uh, 350,000 products, but we had no money for marketing. And uh, the idea of making a, an online mall without... You know, all the customers were asking, okay, what, what sales are, are we going to have? So. I was not solving the right problem for, for them, so it doesn't matter, but it was an experience. I learned about products, I learned about you know, how to build this thing. I work with a development team. Uh, I, I've done a lot of things building this, uh, this mall. Okay, moving on. Um, the, the thing is, um, being, um, I don't know, being sure that I didn't listen to people in general. I failed by myself. I wanted to hit my head, you know, but you are learning very slowly like this. So there is no way you can advance fast enough if you just do it by yourself. So you have to somehow get other people, learn from other people, read. So 
I start. I started. Okay, this is this is as far as I can go with this strategy, uh, being alone and not listening to anybody else. But I'm sure there are people out there that that really you can learn from. So I went to Tech Hub. It was a very nice place. The first time I went to a hub and. Uh, there were a lot of nice people there. I was a jerk because I, I was like a monkey. What the fuck? I didn't know what everybody was doing there. I was always suspicious of everybody. But um, I, I start to see, look, these people give information away for free, like real information, information that can change your life. And um, I realized the value of, of events. Uh, I started to read when I was 30. I was homeless when I was 30, but I started to read. I started to read to, you know, learn. Um, learn from other people that had experiences that I wanted. I wanted to learn the skills that I needed to, to move forward, and I started to trust people a little bit, just a little bit, trusting them, going to events, meeting them, talking, and I saw that not everybody wants to fuck me. So it was, it was a, a, nice, a nice change of, uh, you know, thing. And then, um, so books basically, and uh, books and uh, socializing and events, uh, kind of changed my life, changed my mindset. And I also realized that it's not the mold that I really want. I, I, the thing is, I wanted to do something with impact. I wanted to do something that really helps people because it's very, very hard to be an entrepreneur, like really hard. And if you're doing it for a product that doesn't matter to you, like it's, it's so hard. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, you, you need to have some purpose. You need to have some mission, some, mission, some vision, so, some stuff like that. So basically, I started this other company called BookUps. And this BookUps was about follow the book, discover the people. The thing here was that I wanted to, um, you know, I, I was reading and I wanted to meet people. And I said, OK, what is your way then to meet the people that you want to be around? Then creating these events where you meet around books. But of course, it's not. A, it didn't have a very good business model, and then the pandemic came, and we are asking people to come, you know, uh, come join us outside. And uh, you know, the government told everybody to stay inside, so it was uh, not a not a good thing for us. So um, eventually, this startup failed. We were very lucky. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna change the world. Look at these faces here. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Uh, okay, so basically, these two companies, these two startups, these two products, whatever, they taught me a lot of things, a lot of things. These were the skills that I needed. And what I want to tell you is that, as many know, luck doesn't come or chance doesn't come unless you are working. Like, it finds you working. So I've done these companies, the pandemic came, bookups failed because there was no meetings. And then I had this opportunity. I met these guys from Litera, and we started to talk about building an audiobook uh, platform, which is uh, something that I was very interested in. I had the experience. If BookUps was not there, if uh, Ymol was not there, I would have not have done Voxa, and there, there was no way I, I would have known how to do it. Because I remember how I was, how I was building my first product, to how I am today, which is a huge difference, and everything came at a cost, like learning from from everything that happened. Of course, Voxa was called Stories in the beginning. We were very, uh, you know, there was a competition coming, Storytel, they didn't come. And we said, look, we're going to outsmart them, we're going to put the name Stories, and uh, this is going to, uh, you know, when they make marketing, because they had a lot of money, we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, this is going to confuse people and we're going to win here. This uh, <laughs> quickly backfired because the company said, okay, cease and assist, please change your name, we're coming, uh, do a brand change and so on. And uh, of course, uh, this, is, this is actually the real timeline that I thought is what was, go was going to happen. So we started in January, I think, we had the first MVP and so on. But this is the wishful thinking that I wanted. Like in August, we're going to launch, public launch, we're going to have 400 audiobooks. This is going to happen. And we're going to have 1,000 subscribers. Yeah, and it's going to cost us a few, you know, 100,000 euros, <laughs> like 200 or something like this. So this is, this is actually uh, what, what we thought that was going to happen. This is how we talked to the development teams and so on. We made, you know, a design sprint, we did, we've done the whole prototyping stuff. 
And uh, we form a very small team. This was the beginning of Voxa stories, just a few guys, an idea, and uh, a very big publishing house backing us. <laughs> um, but then we grew, we got a lot of you know people joined in. That's my partner. <laughs> and um, then it became Voxa, we changed the name. But the thing is, we had so, so many failures along the way. I'm going to start with the timeline. We launched in December. We didn't launch it in August. So it was a really big uh, you know, setback. Um, we, but w what we managed to do was hit that 1,000 subscriber mark. I don't know how, but that, that happened. So that, that was, but uh, the rest, nothing, nothing happened the way it was. It cost us much more than we wanted. But eventually, we launched. Um, and it was uh, number one in the App Store, and it still is. So yeah, so from the beginning, it was a very big hit. But this would have not had happened if it was so much, so much work. Like uh, knowing everything from book ups, uh, building the team, doing everything that I've done before, all the failures helped us build this product because there was no other way to do it. And of course, when things got well, you know, my partner said, look, man, I want to take over. So step, step aside as CEO. So I, I step aside. So I'm still a, a shareholder in the company. I cannot talk badly about it. But uh, it's, uh, it's, still, uh, it's still working. So basically, even though it's, a, let's say, a failure for me because uh, I'm, I'm not the CEO right now, but I wouldn't want to be because I love, I love failure and what happened next. So, Everything has a follow-up, and it's like more purpose, more, more drive, more like everything is, is better after each failure. Because everything has a term, and it just happens as much as it can happen for you. So this is, this is what I think. And um, as I started, I said that you should not trust other people. Like you should trust yourself, even since you're a, a kid, if you can develop that sense. Then I evolve now, I'm, I really trust people. I, I, I get involved easily, I, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And um, I think this is, this is what I want you to take away from this because it's uh, one thing to build your own, you know, your own opinion, but it doesn't matter who, but you also you have to listen to people. You have to listen to everybody around you and be able to, make up your own mind about your life because they're not going to leave it for you. So whoever your mentor, whoever it is, is not his money, is not his life, is not his product, so you have to be careful. So I think this is what we should strive for, you know, being uh, confident enough to take our own decision. And um, as Christian said, you also have to argue, argue uh, and this is what I've done even since I was a kid. I, I would uh, stand against everybody to protect something that I want, like an idea. Because there is no other way. If you have one idea, one, one dream that you want to do, how, how can you build a mall when you have no experience? So you have, to, you have to be able to protect it. And you can only do that if you have the experience and you have, and I've done this over and over and over again. I, I stand against, you know, even if you're wrong, it doesn't really matter, <laughs> but you still have to, to be able to stand your ground, basically, to do what you think that uh, should happen. Okay, this is this is my talk for tonight. So thank you, thank you very much.